Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. On salvage hunting at a 17th century mansion in Cambridge, Drew goes for a climb. He's like a monkey, isn't he? <laughs> he visits a massive salvage yard and meets a tough negotiator. Three. No good. 350. No good. In an antique shop, he chances his arm. Can I put in a, a very, very cheeky bit? Um. And at an estate in Shropshire, it's simply child's play. Two sticks. That was definitely mine. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. So this is not open to the public, this, then? No. There's some fabulous pieces in here. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. That's amazing. Wow. I'm having a bit of a dance with it now. <laughs> That's an antique. In his hunt for treasure... Here is our junk room. Well, that's quite nice junk. Everything has its price. 100 quid. You're joking. No. 1,500. Yeah. Love a deal. OK. And there's nothing he won't buy. I quite like that. Hello, hello. Yeah. Hello, hello. With help from his wife, Rebecca, and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. Take care. Thanks, Alex. Ta-da. Ace salvager Drew Pritchard is always looking for new places to pick up state-of-the-art stock for his showroom. Today, he's lined up a visit to a 300-year-old mansion owned by an eccentric entrepreneur and collector. He's travelling 230 miles southeast to Cambridge, a city best known for its university, which was founded in 1209 and is one of the oldest and most distinguished academic institutions in the world. Going to Anstey Hall to meet John and Johnny, father and son, right. who run Anstey Hall as a Desres B&B wedding location and country house hotel. Anstey Hall is a 17th century Grade One listed building, which currently belongs to John de Bruni. Mr. de Bruni once owned Swain Adney Brig, the famous Royal Warrant Holding luxury equestrian and leather goods business, which still flourishes today in London's Piccadilly. He now runs the hall with his son, Johnny. We are clearing out our Audrian stables next door. We've, we've um, going to build some houses there. It's a perfect opportunity, isn't it? Bring someone in to clear them out, make a bit of money, hopefully. I think the ideal day would be all the barns empty and a couple of million pounds, yeah, really. Absolutely. Good morning. Drew. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome Hello. to Anstey Hall. Good to meet you. Drew. John. John De Bruyne. John. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. John, John, yeah. John that's going to make life a lot easier yeah. for yeah. us. That's fine. That's Good. fine. Come on in. Wow. Come on, let's go. Come on in. There you go. Come on Beautiful in. hallway. Nice. So this is now a country house hotel. Yes, it's a super B&B, really. OK. We've got 13 bedrooms. Oh, that is a super B&B. Yeah, yeah. Soon to be 20 yeah. rooms. Soon to be 20, yeah. Wow. Yes. Very nice. So which, uh, so you've got a bar. <laughs> Most important room. My, well, my favourite, yeah, my favourite <laughs> place go. to be. Yeah, it's so what's, what's all this about? What's this here? That was, I had a, a, a country clothing business, and that's for buying jodhpurs and gain the length. Yeah, trying so you hop on there and it mm -hmm. checks the length of your jodhpurs. We had a chain of shops. Uh, we had um, country clothing, and we had one amazing shop in London, which had been there since 1750, mm. and uh, with three royal warrants. I was the Queen's whipmaker by royal appointment, one That's stage of my life. Yeah. That's very nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. This all came from one tree, didn't it? This yes. It was a walnut tree in the garden that fell over, and he, they made it. I asked the local woodcarvers what it would cost to do today, and he said, it's imp no, "No one knows how to do it." There's few, few and far between. Yeah. Few yeah. and far between. Just the hours that go into it, nobody pay for it now. This bar was um, a hat maker's bench in my shop. 
and we made the hat for Steven Spielberg's Raiders of the Lost Ark. It was one of the things we did. Did you keep one for yourself? I got one, yeah. You did? Got one, yeah. That would be, that's what I'd do as well. Yeah. That'd be the smart yeah. thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Fab. Yeah, let's see some more, please. Next, John takes them upstairs to the gas batteries. Well, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so people must feel quite special in that, then. Good, yeah. Yeah, everything. It's all good-looking. Great mirror. <laughs> pretty wonderful. So who's the antique buyer, then? Who's that's the... me. That's you. <laughs> but most of it's family, I have to say. Well, you know, I'm, I'm here looking for stock. Yeah, good. I, I want to buy some and I want to try and sell you some. Mm, good. Um, so where's, where is the sort of... Have you got a storeroom? We've got a collection of barns where all the bits for the next project is stacked up, so that might be our best bet. Mm. Can we have, have a look? look? Absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. I'd like to. But before they head outside, something catches Drew's eye. So what, are, what have we got here? Mm. These are the... Um, Whips I was telling you about, made for the Great Exhibition in 1851. Wow. God, they are good, aren't they? Mm. And this was uh, the family business? It was. It was a business. Wait, that's beautiful. Oh, I that. What's that wrapped in? Um, quite often kangaroo. It's a good... Beautiful, isn't easy it? Easy for making whips out of. Little hunting scene running around there. And it's got the Empire. Everything you could want. That's the Empire on there. Yep. The British line. Recumbent on the top. Mm. With a child on him. There you go. Looking after the children of the Empire. Ah. Sitting on top of the world. Top of the world, yes. Mm. Draw first prize in the lottery of life is to be British. And this we keep if we have difficult antique dealers coming. We fend you know, <laughs> them off with that. You'll be needing that today. Yeah, you'll be. <laughs> best hang on to that. Yes. To be <laughs> oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Again, all signed. Sterling silver. Yep. So, what age is this one? That's modern. That this was, was a new one. Yeah, nineteen sixties probably. So, when did you stop making these? They're so illegal. They're, They're illegal. They got to be. There was a court case, and um, so I know. Beautiful fit. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Imagine getting on, getting on a, an aeroplane with that. What would what they'd do to you? <laughs> you'd, yeah, yes. you'd be off it. Soon. You'd be off yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be flying for a while. Good. The whips in the cabinet are not for sale, so it's on to the storage barns. Oh, lift this one a bit. Beautiful old barn. Wow. Come in, come in. Thank you. Let me uh, grab this. This is the door. Good door. This is the door. Keeps, yeah. the, keeps the horses out. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, now you're talking. Wow. That's spectacular, isn't it? A couple of bits, yeah. It's got lots of shop yeah. fittings. Lot to look at. Lot to look at. We're looking in one of the very old timber frame barns, and as well as being pretty spectacular and ancient, it's full of a huge array of period shop fittings which they used in their London store. There's some really good pieces in here. Yeah, they're all right, aren't they? Yeah. OK, they're all right. No cracks in the glass that I can see. These are good shop retail display. Heavy. So we do an awful lot with the fashion retail business, an awful lot with them. And these are perfect for them. They can display watches, jewellery, socks, ties, shirts, you name it, you can put anything in there. A good-looking piece. These English retail stands with mahogany frames and parquet bases were made in the 1920s. Because of their excellent condition, they could fetch up to £1,300. So, prices. What sort of price are we looking at for um, the two... Two of those. Uh, two cabinets. Two yeah. How much were yeah. those each, say? So? God knows. Roughly. Cool pipe. Don't know. Make me an offer. Um, for the pair, 500. At Anstey Hall near Cambridge, Drew Pritchard is in his element, searching for stock in the huge outbuildings in the grounds of the estate. Yeah, they're all right, aren't they? Yeah. Drew has found a fine set of retail stands from the 1920s. But is his bid high enough? Um, for the pair, 500. I think so. That's all right. Yeah, I think it's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair, because yeah. there's no work to do. Normally, I feel obliged to bring you up. But you don't have to. You don't have to. Don't, that's a fair <laughs> offer. I bought the two vertical display cases, and they'll sell quickly, and we'll double our money. 
but as a first deal, fair price, got them bought straight away. Now I can gauge now everything that I see from that one thing now. That's a good thing for me. Ah, now there's more things here that I yep. like the look of. That's too modern. I like this. This thing here. Yeah, I think a... there are two of those. This what, sorry? I think there are two of those. There is? OK. I think so. Fabulous big pull handles, great colour. And then they turn around and say, we've got two. Now, that does really change things. If I can get hold of a pair, it's going to make it a hell of a lot easier to sell. Incredibly desirable. Really cool. This mahogany haberdasher's set of drawers with ebony and silver handles was made by the English company Drew & Co in the early 20th century. It has a value of £1,400. So you've got two? Yes, I think That makes the two. difference. If you've got the pair, yes. we're looking at more money. Yes. Yep. That's what we need to see, really, yep. right. to be honest with you. And it's off to search for its twin over in another storage bar. It's always last, oh. Limey, yeah. big barn. Yeah. Where do you want to start in here? Uh, <laughs> we'll start at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's good, always good. Yeah. But the mission to find the drawers is put on hold as Drew gets distracted. More display bits there. More display. Mm. Ah, so we've another couple there. Yep. Okay. These look almost like they match the other ones. They do, don't they? Similar. Condition wise, sure, yeah. not as good. These mahogany retail stands are similar to the first pair Drew bought, but not in such good condition, so they're worth less and need a lot of work. Once restored, they could fetch £1,800. These aren't as good as the other ones. They're not, not as nicely uh, condition-wise. A bit battered. 250 That's fair. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Is that all right? That's fair, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Once you can get them out. Indeed, yeah. yeah. And we'll, we'll let me load them as well. <laughs> Please. I have to be honest, they look exactly the same as the pair down there. They're in worse condition, but at least I've still got four of them. Right, next. Drew um, resumes his hunt for the twin of the haberdasher's drawers he saw in the previous barn. Somewhere. He's like a monkey, isn't he? <laughs> Monkey trained smell trained less. monkey, trained <laughs> monkey. Yeah. Monkey Highly smell skin. an awful lot less than you. <laughs> and the table manners are better. <laughs> but it's not that easy to track down. <laughs> no, it's not in here. Okay. No luck in finding it. Drew heads back to the first barn to decide whether it's worth investing in the one piece. Have we got a price? 600 as a minimum. Yeah, I'll take it. All right, you're done. Thank Good. you. Yeah, we'll have that. Good. If your chaps are able to sort of get that yeah. out, that would be great. Yeah, I'll have that. I'll have that. Yeah. I'm going to buy it all day at £600. That had colour, originality, cool handles, great top. What more could you want? Today, I managed to buy a load of things that I really didn't expect I would get. I've come to a huge country house hotel and estate and end up buying shop fittings. You know, it's just whatever happens. In this business, you learn to just roll with it and take advantage of the situations that you get offered and make the most of it, and that's what we've done today. Before we go, I hear, <laughs> I hear there's a rare talent we have on board there as is, well. Yeah, yeah. Yodeling? I do, yeah. Rockstar yodeling? I do. Quick burst. My holiday. Perfect. I think that's, that's <laughs> enough, really. Sing that in the van all the Great stuff. Well, I'll keep you going, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Pleasure. <laughs> well, we've had a lovely day. It's mm. been great fun meeting him. And we didn't haggle. I was surprised, you know, he comes up with a fair it price. He was very fair. That's yeah. one thing I will say. He's very, very fair prices. Yeah. And, uh, a wonderful experience, really. Yeah. Before leaving Cambridgeshire, Drew wants to squeeze in another visit to a very different, but hopefully equally lucrative location. It's only a 40-mile drive to the market town of Wisbeach, which lies along the banks of the River Neen and is mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. We're off to a place called Patrick Reclaim. And this is somewhere I'd never heard of before. I got a tip off saying that it was a very, very large salvage yard, dealing in not only old materials, they've got new stuff there as well. In operation for over 35 years, Patrick reclaims and building merchants carries everything from building materials to Victorian fireplaces and is currently run by Mark Patrick. I've heard about Drew, I'm expecting him into um, latent materials, 
architectural bits and pieces, doors, furniture. Well, bits and pieces I've got, I suppose. Well, I think this is definitely the place. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Hello. Morning, Drew. Oh, hello. How nice you doing? to meet you. Nice to meet you. Tea. Tea. How are you doing? Yeah. All good, thank you very much. <laughs> this is. This looks big. How big's the yard? Um, seven acres. Brilliant. Can Lovely. we? Where do we go? This way. Yeah. If you like. Yeah. All right. I mean, most of the stuff here, lintels and bits and pieces, but I mean... So you do modern and old stuff here as well? Um, Anything uh, and everything, uh, really? Yeah, more or less, yeah. So these are all tiles? There's nothing else here, is What's just, down just here? Just tiles. tiles and bits and pieces down here. Glass bricks. You've certainly got a, a lot of stock. Yeah, there's quite a bit here. Do you have any old shop fittings? Such as? Anything, really. Cabinets, bars. See those? If you had those, an old version of that. Yeah, no, I haven't, I don't think, Drew. It is big, isn't it? The yard is, yeah. This yard, it's huge, it's vast. We were walking around the outside and there's loads and loads of roofing tiles and bricks and stuff like that. And it's interesting, but not really my thing. Oh, wow. Nice oh, talking. It's a huge building. Yeah. My God. It was uh, stored hay and straw years ago. And we just stopped timber and what have you in it since. So you've always been merchants on this site for something? Yeah. God, this place is huge, look at that. This yard is fantastic. Uh, this is the scale of it. It's, it's amazing. As soon as we get into the buildings, this stuff's been here years. I'll dive in here for a second. Fireplaces, bits and pieces in there. One thing that I always do is go all the way to the back of every corner, and here you're going to have to, because they've been on site so long, they've put something there and forgotten about it. That's what we're looking for. Anything? No. So you never know in places like this just how much they stuff... They have a wander through. They're probably looking for the stuff that you've forgotten about. If that is that way, I don't know where they are, then. Yeah. I forgot about them. <laughs> 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 to save time, Mark begins to point out objects that he thinks Drew might be interested in. A cup of tea, nothing like that, no? No. No, no good. Marble bath over there. Ah, uh, that one there? Yeah. Yeah, it's too new. There's some nice oak doors down there. That'll be too modern for you, though, Drew. I'll show you what you're here. Nice, but... No. Too modern. Too modern. That's quite a nice fire so then this one here. Yeah, no, too new again. No, too plain. You have to just keep looking because you've got to look through one layer and then another layer and then another layer. My father is still... Um, still buying? Yeah, he's still bowling. Yeah, he's 82. <laughs> I love yeah, that. Yeah. It's, um, it's a disease, isn't it? I'm afraid it is, yeah. Very nice, though. I enjoy it. If you buy something from over there, Drew, you're bringing it back yourself. <sighs> if I ever get out of here. Oh, careful. I think, I think it's part of the job. You become a hoarder, don't you? <laughs> yeah, no, this is just a really good collection. This is good. Cos you're selling it, aren't you? So you're not a hoarder. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how Drew's justifying it to himself. That's how I'm justifying anyway. it to me, yeah. yeah. That's it. Despite the huge amount of stock, nothing seems to appeal to Drew. So I don't stand here for you, Drew. Let's have a look. More this is more your sort of trad salvage yard, isn't it, this bit? Yeah. Can we get down there and have a look at that? Yeah, have a look. At last, he spots something. That's what I'm looking at. That's a Volkswagen generator. Yeah, single port Volkswagen. Yeah. Famously known for cars, Volkswagen also manufactured standalone industrial generators. This one from the late 1960s was probably used to pump water or to power industrial lighting. Still in working order, it could fetch up to 650 pounds. There's a huge Volkswagen community in Britain, huge. And one thing I do know that this is so incredibly original and I think that must be unusual. I've not seen many of these. So to find such a good original one, I'm very fortunate. What's it worth? And you've got to get it out, obviously. You know, yeah, 700 quid. How much? 700. 700? No. No, not 700. Not 700. Um, can I give you a bid? And it's nowhere near what you're asking. You can try. I can try. Yeah. 250. No good. No good? No. 500 could have bought it. No. Three? No good. 350? No good. I can't pay five because by the time I get it out and clean it up, it's going to owe me 550, and then it's just it's worth seven. It's, it's, if it's worth seven, I'm making 150 quid out of the tax. It's not worth it. Just, just a bit of history, isn't it? 
Four and a half. Four and a half. Top architectural salvager Drew Pritchard is at Patrick Reclaims, a gigantic salvage yard in Wisbeach near Cambridge. God, this place is huge. Look at that. Amongst the mounds of salvage, Drew has spotted a rare Volkswagen industrial generator. But will owner Mark Patrick let it go? Four and a half. Four and a half. One, done. Thank you. All right. Brilliant. Lovely. Today was a very good day. I really enjoyed it. To be honest, I really enjoyed just wandering around such a huge salvage yard. This is a massive yard full of stuff. Never knew it existed. Fantastic. I had Drew down today, looking around the yard. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Overall, we both had a good deal, I think. He's happy with what he's got. I'm happy with what I've got done, and um, it's all good. So I don't think you've ever bought anything that heavy before. Strange ones, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I wasn't expecting to buy a Volkswagen generator engine. Let's see if it generates some money. Hey, hey. generating money. Hey. Oh. There we go. It's better off now. It's better. It's back to Conway, and first off the van are the items from Anstey Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Come in, we'll put the other one behind there. So bow fronted, parquetry base, London maker, all original glass, all original hinges, all original locks. My hands These are, are fab, Drew. Do you like them? These are absolutely, yep. Those upright display cabinets, fantastic. Just knockout, actually. Oh, this is. Look at that. Oh. Isn't that great? That is stunning, actually. That chest of drawers, the handles, the size of it, the colour. I mean, it's just, wow, a gem of a find. But what will Rebecca make of the industrial generator? Right. You're going to weigh it in? No, I'm not going to weigh it in. Really? I got this for the bargain price of 450 quid. It is a Volkswagen stationary generator. So what are we going to do with it? We're going to sell it. To you. To a Volkswagen enthusiast. You. Who needs a generator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hump of metal, and I'm not interested in the slightest. Um, anyway, I'll leave him to it. Drew regularly drives for miles across the country in pursuit of top quality items but he knows it's equally important to keep his eye on dealers closer to home. Today, he's taking the short trip to Leek on the edge of the Peak District. A major producer of textiles from the Industrial Revolution until the mid-20th century, Leek is now an affluent market town with a large number of antique shops. Today, we're off to Leek in Staffordshire to see a guy called Steve Ford, who runs a business called Odeon Antiques. Um, Leek, it's a sort of a bit of a stomping ground. I'll come here every now and again, you know, at least once a month and have a good look round. But what he's got, he's got another warehouse as well, just up the street from his shop, which is rammed full of stuff. My name's Steve Ford, and we've been here for approximately 25 years. We do quite a lot of painted work, a lot of lighting, industrial, interesting items. Hopefully, Drew will find something he likes. Um, we've got a fair range of things, and keep my fingers crossed. Steve. Hi. Drew, how you doing? Yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Right, Hi, how are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah. Um, we're looking for stock. Just right. wondered what you've got in. Um, we've got a bit. A bit? Whether it's the right stuff or not. I don't well, know. you never know. I'd like to have a look, though. Yeah. Because this is just restoration down here. Uh, yeah, mainly restoration. OK, are we right to have a look upstairs? Yeah, sure. Do you want to show us through? Yeah, I'm just saying. The rooms upstairs are reserved for trade only and are not open to the public. Oh, Go ah, yeah, good. Great stuff. It's good, you can see everything, which is... Tried to sort of, you know, chaotic, but sort of so you can see things. But... It's, it's about it's 50 times better than an awful lot of the places we go to, to yeah, be honest it has, with you. It has been worse. <laughs> Yours, uh, we... Yeah, my warehouse, actually, was, uh, was, was... You couldn't see anything. We had a big clear-up. 
This is good because you're able to wander around, see everything. And I can't tell you what a difference that makes. It's so nice and you sort of gone, OK, that sort of toys. There's mannequins, there's industrial things, there's, you know, stuff from factories. It just makes your life so much quicker when you do this for as a living. How big was the bottle of wine? <laughs> It's never big enough, though, is it? <laughs> no. This is really good. You usually go places and you can't see anything. And this is making it really easy to see everything, isn't it? Organised... Organised chaos. Chaos, yeah. <laughs> it's got a price on it. Metal cabinet. It's not... Is it English, this? Yeah, I think so. so. Is it all metal? Yeah. The whole thing. Have you painted it or did it come? That's, that's uh, how it's yeah, come, Yeah, no, I, I, I can't remember, actually. I think, well, I think, yeah, no, I've painted it. I've had it stripped and then... Uh, Given it yeah. quite a good effect you've done on that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Does that work? Is that unusually deep? It is deep, yeah, it is a deep one. This English painted metal cabinet would have been used in an office. The unusual design with the cornice on the top make it attractive and it could fetch up to £950. Hmm. What, what's the, the trade on it? Is there a price on that? I can't even read it myself. 325, 325 on it. Uh, 250 250 That's a fair price for that. That's a fair price. Yeah. yeah, all right, let's have that. Thank okay. you. Yeah, no, that's great, we'll have that. There you go, teeth, massive and heavy. Nice. Thanks. It's got a good retail vibe about that one, that's for sure. It can be sort of reused and go into a kitchen, go into your living room, go into a bedroom or a bathroom. Particularly steel furniture looks good in bathrooms. Asking price 250, bang on, we're gonna buy that. We've got minor work and that can hit the floor and be sold quickly. Drew will buy all the things that have got lots of things in or on them. Right, <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's fine. That's nice, nice difficult access for you. Yeah, that's fine. That's an interesting one. How strange. I've just bought one of those as well. Did you put there's it on two that of base? Those. Yeah, there's two of them. They're old, you... old bases. They're old bases? Th this bit? Yeah, yeah. These 1950s machinists' work lamps were made by the well-known London company Mechelec and are a larger size than usual. Once rewired, they could be worth up to £950. What do these go for, then, sort of, as is? I could do with about 350 each on them. 350 each? Yeah. That's too much yeah, for me. I know where you're coming from, but... It's just, yeah. yeah. But um, I do like them. They're both the same height, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're identical. I do like the paint on them as well. I've got a figure in my head, and it is f away from yours. I think it's a decent bid, but it is a bit far away from what you're asking. But I think it's the maximum I can go. Um, it's 500 for the pair. It's just, I think that's that's where, and that's, that, that's I was, it. I was going to say straight away, I'd, I'd do them for 300 quid each. Um, just can't get there. I think mentally it's sort of... They just fetch such good money, and they're just so, so unusual, just having a pair. I hate bidding people. I like just to say yes, no, no, no yes, no. no. You know, it's sort of much easier. 550, I'll take them, as they are. Yeah, OK. Yeah? I'll go for that. That's Thank you. Enough. I much appreciate it, understand. That's a fair wedge off there. These are big. They're in the original paint. They're undamaged. And there's a pair, and they're on period-looking bases. They've got all the things in those items that we're looking for. Valuable items as well, put in the right place to sell. I think that's a dentist's one. Yeah, it is, yeah, operating stool. So these are great teeth because they've got a, the sprung. Yeah. So you can sort of move <clears throat> forward and backwards, whatever, on it. This English sterling operating stool was made by the Amalgamated Dental Company in the 1930s. Its revolving and tilting ability makes it unusual and collectible, so could have a value of up to £200. How much would that be? I need 100 quid for that one. 100 quid? Yeah. Can we go 100 quid and do 80 quid? Um, I yeah. Don't hit you too yeah hard. No, no, I do it. Sure. Quid. Yeah, fine. that's fine. Sold. That's fine. Yeah, I love that. This is what going to trade warehouses is all about. I'm able to walk into one room and buy three things off one guy very quickly at right money that I can sell. That's what it is. Go down the road and have a look at the shop. Yep. Now we're into the shop, and hopefully there'll be a bit more because that could be where the really good stuff is, or it might just be where the stuff that isn't viable. Who knows? But next on the list. 
gotcha. Good. <laughs> it's very good. It takes an awful lot of work, doesn't it, to get them to this state? It certainly does. Yeah. It's a big old shop as well, isn't it? Wow. It's fab, so it's mainly focused on lights with sort of painted furniture and... A bit of industrial stuff. Bit of industrial, bit of everything. Bit of retro and vintage and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Fantastic. I, um, they seem to sort of stick out like a sore thumb, really, like per, <laughs> pair of side tables there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, they're actually a customs that we get after occasionally, as you do with a shop. Can we sell them for Oh, us? really? Uh, they're not actually ours. They're, they're not actually yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a shame, because I, I quite like them. Uh, <laughs> yes, no, I quite like them as well. <laughs> they're not the best thing in the world, but they've got a look, and they're useful. The amount of times I'm asked for pairs of tables, it's nearly every other day by decorators. These matching 1970s side tables are made of tropical wood and have tripod bases and red leather inserts on the top. They could be sold for £650. Quite like them, but they're, they're, they're too... Sale. Yeah, they are, they're too much money. Yeah. Uh, being that they're customers, can I put in a, a very, very cheeky bid? Um, yeah, I'll give her a ring and ask her. 300 quid. For the pair? For the pair. Yeah. I'll give her um, a ring, yeah. Because I don't think they're that old, but I've no, got like something them. about them. I like the colour. Um, but if she wants rid, yep. is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. OK, all right, I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay. I'll help you. Fingers crossed. You never know. You never know. Steve has gone off to talk to the person. Uh, I put a cheeky bid in, see what happens. Uh, this happens occasionally. He's gone off to speak to the customer, so I'll just hang around and wait. Hi, I've got through to her. She's She'd take 350 of for him right, definitely now. She's going to give me a ring back in a minute. Um, Meter halfway, three, two, five, buy them now, pay you now, done, done deal, finished. Um, that's what she's phoning for, 350 now, or she's just going to check what she's paid for them and then she may knock you a bit more off. Let's get them out and have a look at them, make sure that they're absolutely a pair. <clears throat> Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Uh, he wants to meet you halfway, 325. Architectural salvage expert Drew Pritchard is in Leek in Staffordshire. Ah, yeah, good. Great stuff. He's had a good look through the stock rooms of Odeon Antiques and he's made an offer on a pair of 1970s side tables owned by one of Steve's customers. But will his bid be accepted? Uh, he wants to meet you halfway, 325. Right, OK, fair enough, yeah. Is that OK? That's great. No problem. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's it. Done. Good deal, yeah. Happy. Great. Let's get him out. That'll do. Really good day today. Managed to buy four things, uh, all of them good. I've bought two things with quite a bit of profit in them and two that don't need any work whatsoever and I can sell straight away. So all in all, a very, very good day. I'll definitely be back. At least they're light. Yeah. Ish. Great colour. I think Drew's done OK out of it. I'm, I'm happy. Um, where we are up in, in Leek, it's always a little bit difficult to sell industrial stuff. Um, I know if I was to go down to London, I could get better money for it, but at the end of the day, that's what Drew does, um, and that's what it's all about. You know, you make some money, I'll make some money, and hopefully everybody's happy. Steve, thanks so no much. No problem. Nice to really meet Really good stuff. Yeah. Thank good. you. And good deals. Glad you're pleased. Very well, pleased. We'll be well. back. See you later. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy that, then? I did. That was a good one. Yes. Actually, not bad at all. I think it all tops up. There's a few hundred quid profit there on the day without a massive amount of work, because we don't have the time. We've got so much stuff going through the shop. But two of those things are going to... What are you laughing at? Finn? What are you laughing at? The, you're going, oh, it's too much work from your comfy sofa. You're complaining again. Yes. You've got the easiest job in Britain today. I am. You have. You've got the easiest pulse about a shop going, hmm, that's my thing. <laughs> and then get me to put it in the van. <laughs> Are you telling me that's hard work? I do all the hard work. It's mentally, it's absolutely frazzling. Yes, it's mental. 
I pay the bills, trust me. It's the hardest job there is. And agreeing to disagree, the duo head back to base in Conway, North Wales. Eds! Hello. 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 How are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Good time? Yes, actually. Uh, not bad at all. Oh, they're divine. Best Aren't they fab? Ever. Amazing. Pair, Fantastic. Same length of each section. So they're a mint exact pair. Pretty much untouched. We're just going to give them a really good hand polish and clean so they're spotless. The, the great big green floor lights, um, I mean, amazing. When they're done and they're on the website, they'll just fly out. They are so unusual. I mean, the size is just phenomenal. It's nice. Mm. It's very decorative. Mm. Decorative, the quality is in places good and in other places bad. I wish they hadn't done that around there. The top's a fantastic colour. The shape's good. Could have done with a little bit more curve there. But uh, just a really nice clean on those, Gav. Bring the colour out. That's it. We can start selling those straight away. Not bad, though. Cool. Not bad. But if you can get rid of those, Gav, it's not going to take you very long to go through those, is it? 20 minutes, half an hour? About a day. A day. <laughs> day. It'll feel like a day. <laughs> Gav, Ollie, I'll need you two as well. This is heavy. It looks like a coal bunker. <laughs> From here. It does. It's not a coal bunker. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. It's, it's not a Bloody cheek. <laughs> it's not the finest antique in Britain. I'll give you that. No. It's not even an antique. Can you spin it round and see the front of it? Well... It's over a day old. It's a day old. <laughs> At least. If I lift you on it. It's not a coal bunker. It's not a coal... No. That's really nice, it actually. Is. It, is. it is. Mind your feet, guys. Yeah. Uh, nice old paint. I, I don't know if colour. he said he'd painted it or not. Uh, it's got a cornice on it, which is unusual. You need to often see those. It's a very grand cupboard, actually. Yeah. No money to spend. Bit of time. Gav, half a day. Get that ready, max. Um, and get it in the shop, and I think double the money. Yeah? I like it. Good. Really Let's like get it. that one in, then. Great day for Drew. Um, and for us, actually, because there's not a lot of restoration work to be done. There's some nice profit in some of those items. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm delighted, so... And I know Drew is. A few days later, and salvage supreme old Drew Pritchard hits the road to follow an exciting new lead. It's a two-hour drive southeast to Shropshire, to a magnificent estate near the town of Bridgenorth. I think we come to Shropshire quite a bit. Um, I come down here a lot, an awful lot. It's one of my stomping grounds for finding stuff. Uh, it's got an awful lot of very big country houses have been down here. A lot of money, yeah. a lot of wealth, and still retains a lot of that today and we're off to see uh, a Lord Gavin Hamilton. Right. And he inherited a huge estate down here seven years ago. But what he's asked us to do is have a look at some furniture in a big shed that they've got from some of the houses, and this sounds like the better stuff. Right. Owned by the Hamilton family for nearly 150 years, Apley Estate consists of some 8,500 acres, 300 residential properties, a station house, and a large suspension bridge that crosses the River Severn. The Great Hall and many of the family's antiques were sold, but Lord Hamilton's hopeful that some neglected bits and pieces might appeal to Drew. We're looking forward to seeing Drew, showing him around the estate and also our furniture barn where we store the old furniture that we don't have use for anymore, can't fit in, just to see if there's anything that would interest him for his business. Nice, nice classical English country house. Hello. Hello, Drew. How are you Welcome doing? to Happily Estate. Nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Very well, thanks. Good, good, good. I've brought tea with me. Excellent. Hello, Hello tea. How are you? You good? Very well, thanks. Nice to meet you. And you? Lovely place you've got here. Thank you very much. Gorgeous. Very much. Yeah, this is uh, Harrington Hall, where uh, I've lived for the past seven years. Oh, wow. So where to first, then? Because I know we're here to look at some furniture, um, but um, we're happy to look around anywhere you like. Yeah, well, we'll go and have a... I'll give you a tour of the estate first. Yes, and, please. Um, we'll... 
I'll show you all that we've been doing, and then we'll have a look at the uh, furniture afterwards. Wonderful. Yeah, lead on. Let's have a look. The first stop on the tour, a building that was once Apley Estate's private railway station. So what was this? This was the ticket office or the waiting room, or what was this? Yeah, well, I think it was a combined ticket office and, and waiting room. It makes a really beautiful room now with a high ceiling. So people can come and stay here? People can come and stay here. It's fantastic. That is quite something, though, to have your own railway station. Well, I suppose so. Shame the trains aren't here anymore. No, true, true, oh, true. true. To aim for, Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Richard Towers do. stopped. Next, it's over to the suspension bridge, built especially for the estate in 1905. Poo sticks. Poo sticks. There we go. Poo sticks. <laughs> Got one I this. prepared earlier. Right. One, two, go. That was definitely mine. See that one in the, in the lead? The one in the lead. One in the lead. That's yours, T. Is it? Distant yeah. third. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good, very, very a good distant. strong third. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's stunning. One of the greatest pleasures of my job is meeting really interesting people and getting into places which you'd never get to. And then seeing things like that station, having his own station because I just want one. Uh, that's great. That's very British. I like that. While the estate is impressive, Drew is here to buy. So, as promised, Lord Hamilton takes him to one of his storage sheds. Uh, left. This is where I want to be, really. Oh, yeah, a lot. This is all the, the family furniture. Some of it. <laughs> nice old mirror. They could have used this portrait or landscape, couldn't they? Portrait, the it as portrait. I see a painted mirror as soon as I walk through the door, it's right on my right hand side there, and it's got nice old sort of ebonizing, proper ebonizing, what's left of it, and proper old gilding as well. Extremely worn. This English ebonized and gilt mirror with original plate and backboards is from the early 19th century. After a basic polish, it could be worth up to 600 pounds. The, the ridiculous thing, if the frame, if the mirror was more distressed, it would be a lot more valuable to me. All oh, right, so I should have left it outside a bit longer then. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's worth to see a profit 300. 300? 300. 400? 400. Yes, I'm not in an arguing mood today. Okay. Yeah, that's good. This is, uh... Mirrors are something I always want. Big mirrors are good, but not too big. And that falls just in about the right middle. It's not too big, but it'll fit more or less anywhere as well. And it's big enough to see most of your body, and people like that. With his first purchase made, Drew resumes his hunt. But despite piles of antique furniture, nothing is catching his eye. What's that in there? It's like a nice old cupboard. This black and gold, because that mirror's painted black and gold. Did you have that, it's up from one bit of the particular bit of the house? Um, I'm not sure, actually. I think it's probably something that came out of Apley. He's got a black uh, painted, what would have been a wardrobe or a linen press. But that black and gold painting that matches the mirror is on that too. So I've now got another piece of furniture that matches that piece of furniture in a similar distressed condition. This cupboard is from the late Georgian period and has original black painted finish and gilt detailing. Once restored, it could fetch up to 800 pounds. I'm gonna have to put some shelving or something in it. It'll have to be made into a useful piece of furniture. Again. It's a useless piece of furniture because hangers won't hang that way in it. They'd only hang that way. So we're gonna put some shelves in there if we're able to buy it, turn it into more of a food cupboard. Yeah, would you give me a 300 for that? Um, yes. There you go, we'll have that. Okay. Thank you, deal. Thank you very much. Financially today, as a sort of, you know, a house call, because this is what this is, um, financially it'll pay off. We're not that far away from home, only a couple of hours. Uh, and I've bought two pieces, but there's profit in both and enough to make it worth coming here today. OK, then. It's been a very good day for both of us. He's found a couple of uh, good items. He's um, had a good look around the estate and uh, hopefully he's had an entertaining day, and uh, I've enjoyed it as well. So 
Have you had a fun day today, then? I have. What we bought, though, that's all right. Mirrors, not as distressed as you normally buy. No, not at all, but the frame's nice, you know? The cabinet, although looking a bit dull, the paint's fab. With two valuable pieces on board, Drew and T make the track back to base. Pete, done? Yeah. Welcome home. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you doing? Have you had, a good, right? have you had a good time? Um, yes, we've got some bits. So, a mirror. It's got the original gilding. It's lovely. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Not as um, distressed as uh, Drew tends to like the mirror plate, but very, very commercial. Ah, oh, big old cupboard. That's lovely. Original That's paint. Well done. It's got all the right things to be an early 19th century one as well. Ooh. Really nice bit of rough oak on the top, which gives it a nice date. Original paint, original gilding, original handles, original base, no interior. So we'll shelve it. It's original one. It's we, very, yeah. very original. The next day, French polisher Alex gets to work on making the shelves for the Georgian cupboard. So we've got this nice old yellow pine, which will be perfect for the interior. So we just need to cut it to size, and then we can fit it. Once the planks are cut, Gavin strips all the paint off to get to the original pine. And Alex stains strips of wood that will hold the shells in place. See, it just looks nice and aged. So we're just beating up the edges of the repairs to give them an older look about them, make them look a bit worn, get a bit of a patina on them, and then we'll just rough them up a bit more. Once he's satisfied with the look of the wood strips, it's time to stain the shelves. After they're stained to match the colour of the cupboard, the shelves can be fitted. The Georgian cabinet is now ready for Drew's inspection. So we're all done. Got a nice shine on it for you. Very nice. Lost all the... The knobs and the catches. Perfect. A nice new brass lock. Lovely. English. We've fitted um, new shelves in there out of the old timber. Fantastic. New support. So, yeah. Nobody would ever know it's come up exactly how I thought. In some ways, slightly better, because Alex has managed to find some old shelves and make them fit. So the whole thing's good. The lock's good on it. It's got a good quality English solid brass lock on it now. That all works. So it's a good piece of furniture now. It's useful, it's good looking, it's the right colour, the finish is just perfect. Some of the wear is absolutely outstanding. Um, and it just sits well. It's not too tall either, so it's going to fit most places, and it's not too deep. So it's got everything going for it. And um, there's a profit there. All I've got to do now is sell it. <laughs>